Welcome back to every Trust YouTube channel. In today's class, we are going to learn how to make this beautiful giant truss that we see here. It's a giant truss with standing effect. You can see that all the flowers that we have there are standing. They are not just lying there. And it's a very beautiful tutorial. You can use this to just lift any outfit and it's really simple to make. If this is something you like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to make this giant bow, I'm working with this organza fabric, okay, and then I'm going to use this yellow fabric, it's a bridal satin. I'm going to use this to cut a circle that will form the base of my rose. You can use any fabric of your choice and you can sew it directly to the dress that you're working with. So for the base, I'm just going to put it on fold. That's totally up to you and how big you want this rose to be. But for me, I'll just make a circle of, I may not even fill it up because I don't want to waste too much fabric, of around 6 inches. So you just put it on fold into 4, like you will cut your normal flare. And then now I'm going to mark 6 inches all around from this starting point. So using my tape now, I'll mark 6 inches all around and I'm going to cut it out. So in an ideal situation, you will cut two of these. So that you can turn it out neatly to have something neat but because of tutorial i'm just going to cut one i'm not going to cut lining for it i'll just go ahead and sew my my organza directly on it so now i'm cutting this and you will see what six inches is going to give me so by the time i open it out this is what i have with six inches so if this is not big enough for you, you can increase it to 7 or 8 inches, depending on what you want, it's totally up to you. So now I'm done with this fabric now, I'll work with my main fabric, which is my organza. So depending on the length, remember this is a standing rose, so depending on the length that you want for your rose, that is the measurement you're going to use, and you're going to need a lot of strips of fabric. So I'll just put my fabric on fold, just like this so that it will be easier for me to cut and then I'm going to decide on the length that I want for this rose so like I was saying depending on the length you want for your rose if you want your rose to be around 2 inches it means you are going to cut 4 inches out because you are going to double your fabric if you want it to be around 2 and a half inches it means you are going to cut 5 inches so from here now I just go ahead and cut out strips of fabric of 5 inches length okay I'm done marking my 5 inches and I'm going to make a straight line with my ruler. So you make your organza shift a lot. So you try as much as possible to get something accurate. So like I said, you will need multiple of this line because this is just 16 inches in length. And I want the rows to be a bit big. So I'll cut like three for this tutorial. So from here, I'll cut another five inches and then mark it and cut out my strips of fabric. So now you can see the five five inches that i marked there so now i'm going to go ahead and cut them out so after cutting them out you just join them together to have one long fabric so you cut as much as you will need after cutting them out this is what i have so each of them is 16 inches in length which is the length of my organza so i'll just take it to the sewing machine now and then join them together so that I will have just one long strip of fabric. So I have joined all of them together now and I have one single piece. So now to form my first mini rows, okay, which is going to be my starting point, I'm just going to put this on fold into two. So now I'll have about two and a half inches, okay? Just like I explained, I'm going to put it on fold into two like this. And then I'm going to trim off like 10 inches or what depending on how big you want that little rose to be so now I'll just use my eyes to gauge around 10 inches I'm trying to hold this part with something so that it doesn't shift okay so after arranging it like this or you can just hold with your pin so I'm holding it down with my pin so that I can have them together, I'll just trim it up and then we'll start to work on it. So this is what I have now. 
So what I'm doing, let me just use my chalk to demonstrate what I'm doing. So from this edge now, I'll measure about half an inch or quarter, to quarter of an inch. And then from there, I'm going to bend it to like 10 inches, which I'm going to stop around here. So from there now, I'll just use my scissors to cut it in a slanted from, from here to that starting point. Okay, you can see I am trimming it just like this. Okay, so that's going to form the starting point of my row. So you can see that the length is different from where we start from. And then here I'll just blend it in nicely. So now to start to sew this, the first part that we, we slanted here, I'll take it together into two. Just watch what I'm doing. And then I'm going to try to use this to form my row. So now the first one, you're going to bend it like this. You can see, you can see the way I'm bending it. It was straight like this before. Then I bent it like this. Then from there, you start wrapping it. Okay. Like you're forming a little row. So you can see. I'll wrap it till I get to my actual 2.5 inches. Which means you're going to stop wrapping when you get to where you started bending it from. So I'm just wrapping it around. When you're wrapping, make sure that the two edges match. Okay. You can also do like a small pleat or gather there depending on what you want so you can see now that we are forming our little rows so now i'll just keep wrapping around that starting point make sure you hold it firm on the base so that you don't lose it so i'm moving close to the end of that place where i slanted it i hope you can get you are getting this i'm doing it really slow so that you can understand what i'm doing so this is just me wrapping around it to form my base which is going to be my first rows and now that i've gotten to that part i'll just hold it, hold it down here with a stitch so that i can show us how i'm going to sew this to the base okay so i've gone ahead to sew it you can see i held this down with a stitch and you can see our starting point i don't know the camera is not focusing so this is the starting point and you can see that it is standing so if you're wondering how you can make your row stand after sewing it this is a simple method you can do so now after holding it down with a stitch here i'm just going to trim it to the barest minimum and then i'll start to sew it so you can see what i have so to my base now you try to find your midpoint that is after you must have turned it okay remember i said it is necessary that you turn this base so that it can be neat so that center point is where i'm going to start and i will simply place my rows like this and then i will sew around it i'll show us how i'm going to sew this on the machine i'm just explaining what i'm going to do so that when we get there we're not going to be confused so i'm going to place it on that middle point sew it down and then i'll start sewing all of this around it in a circular form so now you can just decide to start creating that spiral form that you are going to sew with or you can just use your discretion when you get to the sewing machine and then you just follow round just like that so it's totally up to you but if you're a beginner you can just mark this circle round so that you know the sequence that you're following when you get to your sewing machine so now we'll go to the sewing machine to continue so i'm going to start by just placing this starting rows on this starting point here okay i'll place it here and then i'll start to sew so now I will backstitch a little bit and then I'm going to stop. So now we'll start circling around it. Okay, we'll start cycling around it. So you take your organza, you take it together like this, and then you start sewing around it. So for the starting point, because we want it to be a standing rose, I'm going to try to use my hand to lift it when I get when I'm sewing around it so that it can maintain that starting standing position for me. So you can see it's even standing on its own already but if it's not standing you can just try to use your hand to do that so what i'm doing now is just to sew around the starting point i'll arrange my organza very well and then i'll start to sew around it so you can do this slowly and do it in bits so you can see now that our rows is standing on its own so now what i'm doing is following the lines that I already have there and then I'm sewing around these rows so you just sew around this just like I explained I lost some clip there 
so you can make it as close together as you want but like i said i don't want to use too much fabric so i'm just sewing around it so you can see i'm taking these two together you can also weave this first to hold them together to make this easier for you and then i'm just going to keep sewing around this just like this you can also pleat a little bit as you are sewing okay you can just add some pleats and sew so it depends on the effects that you want by the time you are done so what i'm just doing now is just to sew around the rows and you can see that they are all standing none of them is laying none of these rows is sleeping so because i want a standing effect that is why i made it like that there are several ways you can do a giant rose but if you want that one that is not going to just be lying they want it to stand this is one way you can do this so i'm just sewing around this and i'll keep filling the space that i have there so you can see this is what i have so far you can see that there is still a little bit space in my home so you can have one coming in between this but because i don't want to use too much fabric and it's still going to cover it up because of the way we are sewing this so you can see that all of the edges is going to remain neat it's not going to be rough so i will just keep sewing around it so that we don't waste too much time i'll keep sewing take them together you can gather a little bit if you want and then i'm going to keep sewing around so you can see how far i have gone with this and you can see that it is still standing so now i'll just continue to fill it up just like this okay so i'm just sewing around what i already have okay i'm just sewing around it just like this till i fill everything up completely 